Welcome back everybody, let's have a look at XRP, we'll have a look at Bitcoin and we'll work out if there's any point in trying to trade this weekend or if it's just going along with what we were saying yesterday and the day before that. So first of all, staring at Bitcoin, because we have to understand Bitcoin before we look at anything else. Um, it's basically doing what we thought it was going to do, which was um, make that move up to the centre of the Bollinger Band and then get rejected. So that rejection has taken place at, well, we said yesterday 11,700 and it's rejected at uh, 11,650. So thereabouts, you know, and in all fairness, that's generally how you'd really want to play any kind of support resistance. You want to front run that. So if you're looking to uh, long up to a resistance, you want to you want to get in there before everybody else gets out. There's nothing worse than seeing a, a rejection just before your um, take profit. So um, that's basically what's happened here. But the good thing about this is that actually during this period, as it's done that, you know, it's allowed the um, the MACD histogram to start making higher moves up. It's curling up right now. It doesn't look as though it, at this level now, it doesn't look as though it wants to break down beneath the zero point, which is where it would get scary. And that's where we had those low end um, targets of around 10,500 and as low as 9,600. And obviously, all of that could still be relevant, but as far as this chart at this point in time is showing us, it doesn't look like it's hungry for that level of a drop. Um, so what we're going to look at now, we're going to wait and see how this closes over the weekend, not necessarily today, but over the weekend coming into Monday. Because what we want to see is we want to see us closing candle bodies above this moving average which is the um, this orangey one which is the 10 exponential moving average being above there uh, and being supported on there is opportunity for the the downtrend to have finished and in my in in my experience what i would say is that if we show clear supports from there um, then the downtrend has already finished and we will be looking to make moves up again. Now, that said, we do have levels of resistance uh, above us. We obviously have been rejected from the centre of the Bollinger Band, which is moving down, so still technically downtrend territory. Um, breaking above there would, would change that for sure. Um, but other than that, we have this big line here, which goes back over two years, maybe three years now, end of 2017 it was relevant where we were getting rejected and supported and rejected and supported and rejected and supported breaking above there and staying above there and getting supported above there would be very bullish because to me that is the trend line to signify an actual bull run this one the, the first uh, trend line that we were excited about was breaking above this one and when we broke above there we we, we had a little party didn't we because that was a, a big move and that was a very very predictable um, move to take place so as soon as we break above there we all knew that that was going to happen and we we made some decent money on that one and um, this one is slightly different in the fact that there's been battles to break above it and then when we did we came back beneath it already so unfortunately that one wasn't as tradable and um, but when we see and we when when we see um, uh, us being supported on there properly rather than this little attempt here when we need to see decent support on there then I would say it's it's bull run time we're going to be going up nicely and progressively for a prolonged period of prolonged period of time um, but yeah we're still beneath there at the moment and likely to be rejected when we get there so again we've got you know we're in a rejection box we've got rejection at the center of the Bollinger Band we've got rejection likely to come here rejection at the top here and probably rejection around here breaking up all of those it's clearly going to be very good for Bitcoin. So whatever's good for Bitcoin generally transfers to the rest of the market. And you can see that even though these, these charts are very different, they're almost kind of the same in what they're doing. Um, XRP is lagging behind Bitcoin as we still haven't broken above and, and appear to be re being rejected from the 10 exponential moving average. But this isn't such a big deal. Like I say, the charts do do have very big similarities in the fact that the MACD histogram is moving the same. We're curling up and over hopefully to not get to that zero point where there would likely be a big collapse in price if we if we crossed beneath there we're above most major moving averages it's just this one here to uh, to stop the downtrend so where are we going to go from here what's likely to happen from here so basically as you saw with bitcoin breaking above here which is our first main area of resistance at the very very short term that is 27.8 27.9 really cent and um, that's the green that's the uh, the the 10 exponential moving average breaking above there will allow us to ride probably up to the center of the Bollinger Band so not a giant move about a just just short of a, a one cent move um, and then probably get rejected just as we saw with Bitcoin has happened now and uh, we broke above the green the what do you call it the green we've broken above the um, 
the 10 exponential and now got rejected from there. So that's what I'd expect from XRP. We're, we're lagging behind. And again, you can't trade these charts exactly the same. Just because Bitcoin did it doesn't mean that XRP is going to do it. XRP could smash right through all of these, but there's nothing on this time frame on the daily. We'll have a look at the short term time frame, but there's nothing on the daily to say that's going to make a big bold move like that. Let me just have a look at the um, RSI. The RSI, again, it's early days, but it doesn't look like it wants to do a giant big mammoth move at this point. It's trying to reclaim some of these areas that it's lost. Uh, and um, if we can get supported above this this, this mi middle of the Bollinger Band, basically, which, as it stands at the moment, is 28.7 cent, then, uh, then yeah, we'll, we'll be looking to make those big moves again. Again, same as Bitcoin, we're in a resistance cloud as well. The Ichimoku cloud beneath us is green, which is all good, so we're still bullish territory, we're still... We're still bullish on this one. I'm not bearish overall. I mean, I'd only really be bearish if Bitcoin breaks down. Now, it is a weekend and things happen over the weekend that don't normally kind of happen. So we could see a big dump tomorrow easily. It's just ticking along okay at the moment, but it's not showing great signs of strength, nor is it great signs of weakness. Uh, so we really just need to take these one step at a time. And like I say, with Bitcoin, we've gone through that. But with XRP, we need to take reclaim the, the 10 exponential, reclaim the center of the Bollinger Band, and then we can start to talk Talk about big bullish moves because the rest of the chart is bullish. You know, we're above all the major moving averages, golden cross back here, uh, divergence not very neat, but divergence all the same away from these moving averages and above this itchy cloud. So it's all looking okay. We, um, I'd like to see this cross, that would be perfect. Uh, volume's tailing off, so it does appear that, that there will be a big move at some point soon, but I don't think it's likely to be happening anytime. Uh, this weekend, I think uh, going into next week, uh, maybe towards the middle of next week, we'll be looking for some something big to happen, and probably I would say li more than likely to be to the up, but uh, it's difficult to say on this um, at the moment, especially as we're going through the weekend. But maybe the downtrend has finished. So let's go to the uh, four hourly. Four hourly on XRP. Um, again, it was looking pretty bad, pretty negative, getting close to what would have what would appear to be a uh, a death cross incoming but it's not got there yet so what we need to do is I mean it's unlikely that we're going to make this big move going all the way through this big red resistance cloud here but let's measure this out how long would it take us to get to this level here this would take us uh, nine bars to one and a half days again coming into next week this price action at next week will be a lot better for us and um, the 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 MACD on the four hourly looks quite good, about to break into a bullish territory. So one and a half days. So coming into Monday, uh, we'll be over here. And if the price hasn't dropped from the level that we're at right now, we'll be above this red itchy cloud. That'd be a pretty bullish situation for us all. So, um, so yeah, it's, I think it's going to be unless there's a uh, one of those weird, scary, out of nowhere dumps um, take place this weekend. If the price action can just tick along boringly. Um, then I think it will be bullish across the board for these because the short term time frame shows that the, the, that we're looking for a, a big move um, in the very short term as in like a few days. So I'd say by the middle of next week we should be having some big moves with all of these. Uh, XRP looks like it's hungry for it um, but it's, um, it's, it's catching its breath really um, after being underwater for a little period of time. Uh, what we really want to see is into next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, something should have happened by then and maybe it'll be relatively big. But that's all I've got for you right now. Um, thank you for watching and uh, subscribe if you like. If you don't, don't worry and have a nice weekend. Take it easy.